Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and welcome to Overwatch Central. Basically any day now, Batiste can drop onto the live servers. So I figured now is a good time to go through some very generic, straightforward mistakes that you can easily avoid doing as we go over in this video. As I mentioned, these are very straightforward mistakes that you can make within the first sort of 10 to 20 hours of playing this hero. A lot of these mistakes I feel can be transitional between heroes like Ana and Senyata of course, hence where a lot of these mistakes originally came from. These would be good for console players who haven't had an opportunity to play the hero yet and just want to hit the ground running when he goes live. Or those that are looking into sort of guides and videos and want to start somewhere, I think this is a pretty good spot. Some of these mistakes are going to be very straightforward, but if you do have any other mistakes that I didn't highlight in this video, then do put them in the comments below and we'll try and make as big of a sort of list of tips as we possibly can. Without further ado, let's get into the first one. The first mistake I can see a lot of people doing, and I do myself at least initially, is not doing any form of damage. On the face of it, it looks like Batiste can't really do an awful lot of damage. He fires in a burst of three, each of which doing 25 damage base, so not headshots. So 75 damage total if you land all your shots, which can be quite awkward to do. Even the pros have admitted it's a little bit weird to sort of aim with him. So trying to break shields, for example, or shooting tanks, you're not going to do an awful lot. But don't overlook this weapon when it comes to fighting flankers, especially tracers. Here's some gameplay from a game that we had. This tracer here is actually like a GM diva player. So I'm trash at this game in comparison, but I do think Batista is quite good at just warding away tracers. Not necessarily killing them, but making them think twice. Even landed one headshot with one of your free burst fires is a third of tracers health. So it might force them to recoil or to peel back for a second, meaning that it buys you some time and it makes them think twice about how they sort of jump in. If a smart tracer player notices that you're just healing and not doing any damage, and they will, they will take full control of that. So if you're not played aggressively, you're missing out on a vital part of Batiste's kit. Another mistake on the other side of that is obviously not healing. It's an obvious one that, of course it is, but there are situations I suppose where I found myself and I have seen other people go a bit too aggressive trying to kill off a target that's really low health when that target is attacking one of your teammates who is also low health. In that situation, keeping your teammate alive, I would say is far more important because you could do a lot more healing consistently than you could do damage. Not only that, no doubt there will be other people shooting the enemy that's on low health. So if your teammate dies in that scenario, that's on you. So being able to switch between doing damage and doing healing without really thinking about it is going to be one of the first things that you will learn to do playing this hero, I do believe. And playing him well, of course. Like I said, I'm no expert. I make this mistake a lot of the time, but certainly looking through my own gameplay and then watching ML7 and the pros play it, they just have that ability to instantly aggressive support team, aggressive support team, in a really fluid motion, it just comes across clean and you can tell that they have experience doing that on other heroes. So two very obvious areas that we've covered already, but I need to highlight how important those two areas are. The third is chasing your team. I think we've got used to this GOAT's meta style of play where everybody groups up together, you're a Lucio or an Ana, you stand in amongst your team, throwing a grenade at the ground as an Ana or whatever to keep your team alive, basically playing in this death ball. For Batiste, that can work, but I often find that his best playstyle is creating a little bit of distance between himself and the team, supporting them from a distance, and just being in places where the flankers will either have to attack the objective attack the rest of your team or attack you on the high ground or just further back. But also Batiste lends himself to those kind of bunker comps being on high ground with an Arisa set back doing damage from a distance. That's where he wants to be, either with his team or separated from them. Here's a really good example of what not to do on Nepal. Whilst I don't really die here and the fight goes fairly well in our favour, there is zero reason for me to be stood right next to our Reinhardt, even trying to lead the line. I think this is my like main tank play coming into full effect when it shouldn't be. I should be at the back, sort of by the doorway, healing people with my right click, being able to scout out what exactly is happening in the battlefield. Being stood here is just asking for you to get killed. As I said, it worked out here, but nine times out of 10, I can assure you that it won't. Next up is not really utilizing the shift ability. Both the abilities that Batiste have are very powerful, but they have very long cooldowns. So you need to be careful with how you use them. With that said, looking through my own gameplay, I often feel like I didn't use my shift ability enough. I feel like it's one of those abilities where you go, oh, it's really strong, it has a long cooldown, I'm gonna save it for a rainy day. But more often than not, you can get away with just using this as and when you need to. Not so than the invulnerability, Field, I find. 
Even though we mentioned that Batiste wants to be playing distance away from his team, this is one of those abilities that is obviously better when you are right around everybody, right? I really don't think that you want to be using this ability unless you 100% need to when you're on your own being attacked or even next to your other support. It just feels like one of those big abilities is not really used. It's kind of like grenade in that sense for Anna where you don't just want to be using it on yourself where there's so much capability to use it in other situations. But I feel like that comparison to Anna grenade is probably a lot closer to the invulnerability field and that goes over our next mistake not practicing your invulnerability field throws this is important for a number of reasons this cooldown is like 20 seconds long and it can be one of the most clutch abilities in the game when used properly a lot of the time it can be really easy to do there's a diva bomb coming in you just plant it on the ground everybody goes into the field hunky dory all works out pretty well however there will be some situations where you need to throw it at a target to keep them alive and much like anna's grenades if you're out of practice and you're not quite sure the trajectory of throwing it I suppose it would be then you can over throw it in which case you miss your target or under throw it for the same reason but also bear in mind that this field also bounces off objects like if I throw it at this wall as you're seeing it can bounce pretty dramatically so not knowing how the physics of this ability works means that you could be trying to do clutch plays and it just won't pay off so I definitely recommend going into a practice range or setting up a custom game with zero cooldowns so you can just get used to the fact of how far it throws it how it bounces off objects then you can become that player which no doubt we'll see a couple of months into the future that manages to throw some pretty amazing invulnerability throws. The next mistake I wanted to highlight is not hiding the invulnerability field. It's a really strong ability but it can be destroyed fairly easily if the actual field deploying bot I suppose it would be can be spotted and killed from a distance. Much like a Rhesus Bongo you want to be able to place this behind cover where the enemy team can't see it. This is an example on screen. Because of this it means that you have all of this area and all the enemy team can do is either engage on that point which is maybe what we're doing anyway or they have to back out and wait for the invulnerability field to die down both of which give you a huge advantage putting it out in the open you can put it in the best situation possible saving your team from a grav but if the enemy team can see the actual killable thing around the field then they will just destroy that and kill you afterwards but there's no doubt in my mind that in one month or two, it will become fairly easy for players to just go, right, kill the field, okay, done it, and then go. And finally, for the invulnerability field, not prepping for specific ultimates or abilities. This is one of those abilities where you need to expect clutch plays. You can't use this whenever you like. I think it's a little bit more forgiving to use it for the actual heal ability on your shift key, but for the invulnerability field, man, we need a new name for that. It's just too long. If you use it at the wrong time, then the enemy team are just gonna grab or diva bomb afterwards and kill your team. You should be using it quite sparingly, not just holding onto it for the sake of it, but you need to expect that if they're running a Zarya or a Diva or whatever, then you need to prepare for those ultimates to come in. You need to be really aware of what the enemy team is running, what they're about to do. They're gonna come in with Dragon Blade, if they're gonna come in with Wrecking Ball's Mines, these are all examples of situations where you could save your team with a properly timed ultimate, but you can't just rely on luck in that case. You need to be prepared for those ultimates and abilities to come out into play. Next up, I want to talk about communicating your ultimate. Here's a prime example of Shofar kind of making this mistake. He wants his team to push up, but he puts the ultimate down, and you can see that the rest of his team around him just want to kind of use the ultimate to get as much damage out of it as possible. Of course, because they're running goats, they can't really do that, and ultimately, they didn't push forward, and the enemy team just disengaged meaning that ultimately this ultimate did absolutely nothing as i highlighted in another video on how to play batiste you could dictate what your team does by using your abilities and ultimates at the right time but if you don't get any effective use out of them that is completely on you but that goes nicely onto our final mistake that i wanted to highlight it's not so much a know where batiste is good or bad but really pay attention to your lineup because it really does dictate how you play batiste alongside a Lucio, for example, as supports just isn't very good. The healing output just isn't enough and you find yourself more than anything trying to focus on specifically healing targets because of course Lucio can do that. I think Batiste wants to be paired up with a Anna or a Mercy or even a Zenyatta in cases but the healing output again there is going to be fairly low. But if you're paired up with a Moira you can be a bit more damage orientated because you know that the Moira has got the healing effectively sorted. Knowing how to play alongside different supports is going to be very important for this hero. I mentioned Anna and Mercy who are really good at healing specific targets you could just sort of keep everybody else topped up while the Mercy and Iana really focuses on critically low targets. 
Not to mention with both of these heroes, you could be a little bit more aggressive and try to shoot targets that are trying to flank you or just put out a little bit of damage and play a little bit more aggressively so long as you're keeping your Mercy or Ana alive. But as I mentioned with something like Zenyatta and Lucio, you are on pure medic duties there, I feel. You want to be doing as much healing as you possibly can. You don't really have the luxury to play aggressively or do damage in that case, but it also does depend on your composition as a whole. If your team's running goats, then you're not going to get as much use out of that as you would play in a Orisa Bunker Comp as an example. Much like Moira, you can try and play Batiste all the time and have pretty good success, but there are going to be situations where the hero is just not good to be very good, and you can't really blame your team getting upset at you if you're just trying to one-trick him in a situation where it clearly isn't working. He's a very static healer. He wants to be in the same spot for as long as possible. He doesn't want to be moving around on a control map. So if you're trying to play him on control with a dive team that's leaving you behind and you're not quite sure what you're doing, then you really need to change up your playstyle or change your hero altogether. But as I said, here are some, you know, straightforward beginner's mistakes that you can definitely make on this new hero. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any other mistakes, as I said at the start of the video, do put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.